And it's my joy to introduce uh, our good friend, uh, Tony and Ashley. 24 years ago, the Lord uh, healed uh, uh, Tony for a very serious fourth stage uh, um, um, nasal pharyngeal carcinoma. <laughs> In other words, oh, yeah, actually, I've memorized the, word, the phrase, <laughs> nose cancer, <laughs> uh, very serious spread to the brain. And uh, uh, so uh, since then, they've been, you know, serving the Lord, uh, uh, sharing the story in many, many churches uh, all around uh, uh, this region. And of course, uh, Tony and Ashley themselves uh, uh, are just, uh, as they move on in life, uh, just seeking to, to, to uh, glorify in various ways uh, uh, Ashley herself. Uh, it's very much into banking and finance. Some of you actually may have met her before, and she uh, just uh, was so faithful in ministering for the Lord uh, right there uh, in the marketplace. So, uh, without further ado, right, it's my joy to invite uh, either Tony or Ashley or both of you. <laughs> right. As you can see, Tony is not immortal. <laughs> Uh, his brain uh, has a fracture. They will tell the story. Yep. Good morning, church. Of course, you are wondering why am I wearing a ski boot in this place? Yeah. <laughs> I had a fracture a uh, few days ago because of accident. But, you know, God's work must go on, broken bone or not. Today, uh, we're going to have this opportunity to talk to you all about Jesus. Thank you to Pastor Terry who introduced us to this church so that we can bring his words to encourage you and to give you hope in a God called Jesus. So today we're going to talk to you all about a God called Jesus. We are just instrument because it's not about us. It's all about a God called Jesus. As usual, as the many uh, places and uh, country that I shared, uh, it's always ladies first. So I will pass on uh, this mic to uh, my wife, Ashley, and she will start the sharing first and then after that I will come in later. Thank you. I think thank you. Good morning church. It, it is truly an honor and when my husband fell down in Melbourne home in our garden just the day before we fly the next morning and I knew God you're doing something great in Singapore. So today we are about to share with you our amazing story the Lord has written in our life, through our lives. Not easy, 24 years as Pastor Terry has introduced us, but um, you can see through the journey that our faithful God will always honor to those who are faithful to Him. Even though we were not even believers then, we were very staunch Buddhist Taoists. We went through a whole long journey to truly find God, or rather than God found us through our very challenging times in our life. And this morning, before we share, I'd like to um, read this Isaiah 43, because it is the word that a pastor came to ICU and prayed over Tony. Isaiah 43, 1 to 3. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters... I will be with you, and when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze, for I am the Lord, your God, the Holy God of Israel, your Savior. This word is the word that truly resonates very close to my heart every time I read this scripture and remember how my husband walked through the journey not knowing God. And practically my husband died as a Buddhist and woke up as a Christian. And truly that's how awesome this God is. Before I share my testimony, as you can hear um, through our whole journey, it is through the power of prayer that God hear a crying heart. 
and He answered our prayer. So I'd like to just say a quick prayer before I share the testimony. Dear Lord, I just thank you. Thank you for this morning, this time, that you allowed my husband and myself to be able to, in Singapore, at this beautiful church of yours, and all your children that you have called here. And I ask that, Lord, will your anointing, your Holy Spirit, be with every heart here today. Open their ears, open their hearts, and hear your word, and hear your story, and hear your faithfulness in each of our lives through this amazing journey that, Lord, you have written in our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just a kind of brief background. My husband and myself married, been married for 32 years. Out of that 32 years, 24 years is a journey of walking um, hand, um, challenging moments because as you have heard, he was diagnosed stage four cancer 24 years ago and has spread through uh, from the nose to the uh, bones and the limb nodes and eight parts of the bone. And eventually, of course, through the 24 years, the first 12 years when we don't know God, we were going all kinds of prayers, idols, fortune teller, tarot card reader, master, my mom's um, sifu, and going through a lot of um, amazing uh, idolatry practice where now that when I read Deuteronomy, that Lord say, I know all this consulting medium and all the detestable things, I've done it all, but then yet, our Lord is so merciful, still be there for us when we truly need Him. As we did not know God, but God has already chosen us. We walk through the journey of um, not knowing God, consulting Sifu and all that, taking talisman, drinking scorpion wine, sending my husband up in the roof for lightning strike because the Sifu says so. And truly, truly, I've done it all. And then yet, the Lord is so merciful. He sees the heart. I truly think that because I was so desperate when he was given a stage four cancer, our son then was nine months old. And my husband was in the clinic. My son was crawling in the clinic. And my, son, my husband just looked at me and said, I just wish to see our son walking because three months he probably, he was crawling, toddling around. And that's all his wish. But you know what? God gave him more than what his wish, right? And two months ago, January, my son just got married and walking down the aisle with my daughter in love, not daughter in law. And amazing, right? Only this Lord Jesus can do wonderful things like that. Because as he was walking down as parents, we give a message. Truly, that message is remind us of God's grace and God's goodness. Because it just, I just couldn't stop my tears as I was seeing my son walking down the aisle as we were looking at it. I kind of whispered back to my husband, your wish is more than fulfilled, you know? And, you know, you get one plus oh, together with our daughter in love. That's how amazing God is. And today we'll be able to share our testimony also truly is God's um, grace and God's mercy upon my husband. And I remember... Um, the journey of them walking, going to see doctor, and never medical record or medical report never good. So, but that time we didn't know God. That's why we go a big round. Eventually, I found God in 2005, whereby it was on my bed, and God just asked me to go to church, and I was very stubborn. And I thought, I know it all. I don't need God. I was meditating, going to India with my husband. Every year, we shave our hair for 14 days fast and wear the rope. My husband and my son, we were very young, one, two years old, three years old. But it was truly the human way. Even chanting mantra didn't help my husband until the cancer spread to the brain, that the tumor grew in the brain, and that's where our encountering with God, especially for my husband. Then I was a very new Christian. I didn't know how to pray, but I just holding the Bible, just reading the Word of God every day to sustain me when he was in the ICU after the brain 20 hours operation. And he didn't wake up and he was going to the coma. And after four days, 
multiple organs failure, and the doctor kind of gave me a consent form to ask me to switch, um, sign the consent form to switch off the life support machine. And that was a moment, my encountering with God, when God spoke to me through John 11, 11. So this morning, a scripture, Pastor Terry, quite amazing because John 11, 11 was the word God spoke to me when I was about to sign the consent form. It says, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. I am going to wake him up. So at that time, I was really a very new believer. Don't really know how God works. But by faith, that time, I knew God is speaking to me. And I just know that God is going to wake him up. But I didn't know when. So I just waited and at the hospital when my father-in-law asked me to go ahead to sign the consent form. And my father-in-law knows that Tony was a very staunch Buddhist. So my father-in-law arranged the monks to come to the hospital to chant the mantra to bring the body back to, for the funeral. Obviously, because I didn't switch it off, I didn't um, sign the consent form, so he was sustained by the machine, all the machine, 12 tubes running from his body. And, and my father-in-law asked me why, and I show my father-in-law John 11, 11, and he thought that I was really, um, cannot accept the fact that my husband is a pronounced date and um, kind of brain date. And I told him that the Lord God is going to wake him up. Obviously, my father-in-law thought I have a nervous breakdown or cannot accept it. So he gave me a few days, but every day from the fourth day to the seventh day, and it was a miracle. And the pastor from somewhere, not, I don't know of, not from my church in Malaysia, came to pray over Tony very, very, very um, charismatically and claiming and declaring Isaiah 43, the scripture I just um, read just now, and over, uh, over Tony. And that time, I have no clue. And I just kind of uh, watching Tony's body from the fourth day, fifth day, sixth day. But of course, a lot of things happening during that three days. And the pastor also told me that I have to destroy all the idols thing that we collected from India, Tibet, Thailand, and before Tony got healed. So I went to my mother's house and collect all the idols and burn it on the sixth day. And the next day, Tony woke up on the seventh day. And the first word he said is, I saw your Jesus. And can you imagine a very stubborn man and that in the hospital when I brought my pastor to pray over him, he chased the pastor out to practically say, I don't need your prayer. Um, the other words need your prayer. I don't know who is your God. And um, you're only a pastor. Pastor is only secretary to God. If you want me to believe your God, I need direct line. That's what my husband said to the pastor. <laughs> so that's how stubborn my husband is. And, but of course, you know how amazing our Lord is, right? He sees our heart. And truly, truly, through this journey, when my husband woke up from the coma, obviously the doctor was very happy. But at the same time, he told me that good news that he woke up, bad news that he will be paralyzed for the rest of his life from neck down. And he was on a wheelchair, um, wearing pampers. But of course, God did a marvelous job. I was wheeling him in the wheelchair, but of course today he's wearing his ski boots, right? But if not, normally he was walking up with very confidently. But this is how amazing our God is. And I want to invite, because of the time, I didn't want to go into detail, I want to invite Tony to come and share with you all the direct line that how he encountered Jesus in his darkest moment when he didn't even believe Jesus and he even chasing the pastor uh, out of ward and yet how the Lord has done for him. Today he's walking beside the ski boots. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, church, as you have heard, uh, so I was in the hospital and they actually cut a hole in my head they have to take out my skull because my cancer 
grew to a size of an orange inside the brain. So the doctor shake his head, we have to cut even the brain. So after the operation, I basically come out as a vegetative stage, means in coma. I'm almost like a person that all the f functions are not there anymore. So they connect me to a machine that tells them when my, my brain is working or not. That's the most important in your body. And uh, four doctors, not one, told my father to come in and told my wife the bad news. He said the machine tell them the brain is already 99% gone, dead. So for the doctor medically, if your brain doesn't work, you are basically dead. So told my father to collect my body for barrier. Then they realized my wife had to sign a form so that they can switch off everything and then put me in a mortuary. Mortuary is ice room for dead people. I mean, four doctors, you know. You're not talking about one. So my wife uh, came in and told them, I'm not signing this form because my God is going to wake him up. So, I mean, you imagine these are four specialists. You know. They look at my wife and then they confer to each other, oh, very simple. This woman is cuckoo. <laughs> How can man, the, this man, the brain dead, lungs dead, kidney dead, liver dead, her God is going to wake him up. Of course, today they shut up. Lah. They kept quiet, you know. Because they don't know Lord Jesus. Even at that time, I didn't know Lord Jesus. And so they just put me next to, uh, well, in the ICU, waiting f to shut off everything, to put me in a mortuary so that I can be put in a coffin. To them, I'm already gone for the coffin. So, while in the uh, ICU, waiting, because the doctor told my wife he's not going to do anything because you're wasting our time. A dead man is a dead man. You cannot pretend he's not dead. Then on, because um, they, sh they show that the machine that comes from America, that my brain is already dead for four days. Normally, they said to my father, after one day, we can 100% confirm his state, but this four days. So, after the fourth day, they put me next to the ICU, and on the fifth day, I believe, I had a vision while in this ICU bed as a vegetative stage. Now, I cannot produce for all of you exactly what Jesus has shown me when I was dead. But I'm here to encourage you how awesome a God that you serve so that you would have some idea of this living God, what He can do in your life. So I'm going to show you some pictures of what I saw when I was confirmed dead. So, in my vision, I mean, you must imagine I'm in an ICU bed. The first thing I saw is a very bright light, like a sun coming down towards me. And I was saying to myself, with this vision, I was saying, how come the sun is coming towards me? Because normally the sun is stationary up there, but it's coming down coming down slower, slowly as it comes down. And I can see that it's so bright, I have to, in my vision, I was using a hand to cover my eyes so that the sun won't blind me. As it continued coming down, as it get closer and closer, then I realized this sun that I'm looking at changes shape. It's slowly changing shape as it gets closer and closer. And it changed to a shape. I'm going to show you what happened after the sun come nearer. Uh, Eliza, can we picture two? This is what happened to the sun. 
It changed to this shape. It's like a bean with the hand open up and still very bright, as bright as the sun, still coming down, you know. And you can see even the clouds turn left and right to open a hole for him to come down. So even the clouds are scared of him, you know. And it continue coming down. And I can see the feature that there's a hand and there's also a face. And this is how awesome this God is. I already know it has to be God because no one can be so bright, as bright as the sun and still be moving and coming down. And I saw for a moment the face. Of course, I share in many churches, many pastors ask me, how do you know it's Jesus? I said, I have a Christian wife for three years. So you must imagine a strong Buddhist married a strong Christian then. Always arguing who is God, you know. And she always come back from her cell group from her Bible study with a magazine of Jesus always, the face of Jesus in front. So this God, our God knows what we have seen. So he had shown me how he looks like. So I knew then, oh, this is God, as bright as you can see, like the sun coming down. And yet, I can see his face. And then, as it continues coming down, it comes all the way down and then end up on my right side. So, in my vision, I was thinking to myself, first, I know he is God, definitely not human. And I say to myself, such a shy God. Stand on the right. Don't stand in front of me and see me eye to eye. Now that I am a Christian and I read the Bible, the Bible made it so clear. He is not a shy God. He doesn't want me to die. Because in Exodus 33, chapter 33, verse 20, God make it very clear. God himself say, no one can see me directly. Those who see me directly will not live. Why? At that time, I didn't understand. Now, maybe I can have more understanding through the Bible because this God that we all serve is called holy, holy, holy. Three times holy. And what are we? We are sinful, sinful, sinful. So sinful cannot look directly at holy. It's not God wants us to die, but because we are so unpure compared to this holy God, we just melt away if we see him directly. So he stood on the right. Now I understand. Because he doesn't want me to die in that ICU so that I can come here this morning to talk to all of you about him. A dead man cannot glorify this God. So that's why this God stood on the right. Now I understand. Still very bright. Then the second thing I hear on the right side a thundery voice. I can never produce the voice of Jesus because I believe that is the voice of Jesus. I cannot produce for you all, but I'm going to give you a taste of what I heard when I was dead in the ICU bed. I heard this. Tony coming from the right. Bam, bam, bam. Exactly like thunder. Very thundery, the voice. And the first word says, Do not bam, bam, bam. Be afraid with thunder in it. Just by the word 
Do not be afraid with this thunder. I have never experienced something like that. So I felt afraid. He knows I'm afraid. <laughs> That's why the first word he said, do not be afraid. But again, he knows I'm afraid because it's thunder. You know? I mean, how can thunder talk to you? And after that, do not be afraid. Then the, the second word came again. Again, it go palm, palm, palm. For those of you who want to know how the voice of Jesus is like, go to the chapter of Job, J-O-B, 37, verse 4 and 5. There you can read all about how the voice of Jesus or our God sounds like. So this thundery voice that I hear, now that I know the Bible, I realize God is very powerful. He doesn't want to frighten us, but it's his nature, his power. So the second word I heard, still from the right, is Tony, bam, bam, bam. Even my body shakes when I hear that, you know, because the vibration of the voice. It says, remember this for the rest of your life. I walk in front of you so that you remember. Not turning left or right. I walk in front of you. Of course, today that I have become his people, became a Christian. Then I realized then what he meant by I walk in front of him. means our Lord walk in front of us. Not we walk in front of the Lord. The Lord always walk in front of us. So we follow, we become his disciple. Now I understand what he meant. I, I am to follow him, although I'm dead in that ICU bed. Follow him and we become his disciple wherever he brings us. Now, I'm going to show you how I look like in the hospital so that you can have an idea. Now, this is how I look like with 12 tubes and with a big tube inside my brain with a hole in my head. So, I mean, anybody see also know that, oh, this guy is a goner, you know. So, even the four doctors say bye-bye already, and then, after this vision, things changes. Because our God is a God that can heal. Heal beyond doctor's understanding. And with this, as my wife has explained, you know, the, the pastor who came, which we don't know who he is, but he came and uh, was told that the Lord told him that he must come and pray over me and that I am to ask my wife to go and destroy all these idols because when I was a Buddhist, I go to Thailand, Tibet and collect all these even monk ashes. You know. So all those must be burned according to the pastor because he said, I got this word from the Lord. So after burning everything, my wife burned everything and then for some reason, I wake up seven days later, exactly seven. So I believe maybe up there, seven is very important. So I woke up, of course the four doctors confirm I'm dead, they all get scared, you know. Hey, this one goes up. Because to them, want to put me in the ice room, I was going to wake up, you know. Seven days later. So, when, when I woke up, they all came with a machine to test my lungs, kidney, because they don't believe. How can this guy can wake up like that? So they were shocked to see that everything start working. And they shout to each other, John, Dr. John, everything working. So to them, it is not normal. And then after that, um, 
since I woke up already, they just uh, don't know what to do. And the brain surgeon, the one that cut my brain and took out part of the tumor, came in and said, look, and he's a top brain surgeon in Malaysia and in Singapore. And he said, uh, normally, I don't talk to patients. It's not my duty. But for you, I come in because you die and you come back. So I have to talk to you. <laughs> so he said, I am the brain surgeon who cut your brain and took out part of your brain. I have very good news for you. I also have very bad news for you. The good news is four of us, all four specialists, say you're dead and you wake up. So it's a very good news for you. But I also cannot lie to you. I am a brain surgeon. I know everything about brain. No one can tell me about brain. I took out part of your brain. That's the bad news for you. Without that brain, you will be a paralogic, means a person from neck down, you can never use your hand, you can never use your leg for the rest of your life. And I got you a wheelchair, you will live in this wheelchair for the rest of your life. So, this true, he gave me uh, a wheelchair, I was... Uh, wheel to my condo after I woke up. The first thing my wife uh, did for me is buy pampers because I cannot go to the toilet. And can you imagine you are old man already, 50 years old, wearing pampers. The biggest pampers i ever seen can wrap around you like a sarong. So, you know, then I got very curious. Don't forget, I die as a Buddhist. And I woke up as a Christian seven days later. So I asked the pastors, hey, how to know this God, Jesus? So they all say, you must know the Bible. The word of the Bible come from this God. So sitting in a wheelchair with a panel like that, with a Bible in front. So of course, every pastor asked the same question. Tony, your hand cannot move. Your leg cannot move. You are paralytic meaning nothing moved below your neck. So, how to turn the Bible? I said, wow, then you must come to know our living God, Jesus. He has a sense of humor. I pray, first time, nothing worked. Still cannot move. Second time, and then the third time, I said, Lord God, I want to know you, and I need to know you. Please allow me to know your words that's in this Bible. And nothing move except this thing move. Yeah. Only this thing move. Because this God knows Tony very well. If Tony can walk on that day, he'll go all the shopping center. <laughs> Where got time for my Bible? So I cannot even go to toilet wearing a pampers, sitting in a wheelchair. So it's called kwai kwai, la, you know. Because you cannot do anything. So read the Bible with this uh, finger from page one until the last page, you know, Revelation. And when I finished in 30 days, I finished the whole Bible. Because you don't do nothing. You cannot go shopping center, cannot do anything, just read only, just read Bible. I believe this is what God wants me to do. Because as a Buddhist, you never really know God's words. Also, he's emphasizing today and also for all of you how important the Bible is. The words of the Bible. Remember, the privilege you have, the words of the Bible come from him directly. That's how powerful these words are. It can heal you without you even knowing. So when I close the Bible with this uh, little finger, last page, suddenly, you Im I don't want you to be in my situation, but I want you to imagine you are sitting in a wheelchair now. I'm in a wheelchair. And can you imagine if you see fire on your leg 
left and right after I closed the Bible. So God let me see fire, but actually there's no fire. But in my eyes, I see fire. So when I saw fire, so what do you do? When you are on the wheelchair, you see fire on your leg. <laughs> By nature, la, I jump up of the wheelchair because on fire, right? So I'm looking left and right. Oh, this one is another vision, I say, you know. How can, you know, I'm standing up. The doctor already confirmed, brain surgeon, you cannot use your leg anymore. So I was thinking, oh, if I can stand up like that, I think maybe this God, after I finish the Bible. So imagine how important for you to read the Bible. God is telling me, you finish my Bible, now you can stand up. So after that, I started walking slowly, you know, exactly like a baby. When you never walk for months or, or a month, you, you, you feel, don't know how to walk, don't know how to use a leg. But every step improved. And over a week, I was walking. Another week, I running. Another week, I ballroom dancing with my wife. And then another few weeks, go skiing in a mountain. So, this is our God. So, don't just think you read the Bible just for fun. Because the privilege is this. God put his mind, God's mind, inside the Bible. So, when you're reading, you're reading the mind of God. That's how powerful the words of the Bibles are. So, you know, the other thing that's important is that this God can do all things. Because if, if you look at Matthew 19, verse 26, God said, for man, that means for a doctor who doesn't believe, impossible. For God, everything is possible. With man, things are not possible. So I have to go into the clinic to see the brain surgeon for checkup every six months. So when I walk in, the doctor in the clinic, a very big clinic, he just said, hey, can you wait outside? There's someone in a wheelchair coming today to see me. <laughs> so I went to see her, his nurse, Mary, her name, I remember, and she said, yes, it's your appointment. So I, he bring me in again, and the doctor looked at me, you are Tony. Say, doctor, I am Tony. Where's your wheelchair? <laughs> I said, doctor, if I tell you what happened to my wheelchair, got no time for other patient. <laughs> you got one hour or not? The doctor, cannot be, cannot be. You come in. I want to see with my own eyes. So big cleaning. So every step I walk, I can see his eyes getting bigger and bigger. And the jawbone dropping lower and lower. When I reach the other side, his jawbone is on the floor. <laughs> Never say a word. So I said, Doctor, uh, what's the checkup for today? Said, Go home. <laughs> Go home. Because for the doctor, it is an impossible thing. Because he knows how brain works. No brain, no walk. This fellow, no brain, walk. How, man? So, so that I think God is using my brain to change him. The good news is, two years later, I found from his other colleague doctors who say, this man will never believe in God. He became a Christian. So, I, I never even evangelized this doctor. I never said, hey, you must come to know Jesus. No need. He himself come to find out more about Jesus. And then I was told by his colleague, he got baptized two years later after he became a Christian. So this is our God. He can do impossible things. So never look down that you talk to your friends or relative, you know. And this God can do things that will change the person's heart, no matter how hard, especially a, a stubborn cow like me, you know. He can change me. Of course, you don't want to be like me. You have to die first then to come to know him. You can know him without dying. 
And I want to show you the last part because I think time is the essence. <laughs> uh, how my brain looks like. This is from the uh, hospital, MRI. Eliza, can we have the last uh, slide? Uh, this is how my brain looks like in a ICU. With, with a, this is a doctor's, uh, uh, what do you call it, a scan. So that you know, I'm not talking to you all about from the air. So that you know this is actual medical evidence that this God can do impossible things. Thank you so much. We are shuffling back. Yeah, sit down there. I just want to really praise God for, of course, we are limited with time. Um, you know, we just want to share with you the encounter with God. It wasn't easy 24 years. I mean, 2008, we found God um, through his um, death, resurrection, especially for, for Tony. But obviously, 2015, seven years later, he has a relapse with cancer. And that's another story. I need another hour, which I'm not going to go in. But I'm just going to finish off with this song, God Give Me. And God actually wrote and sang this song to me while I was going through tough time with my husband, 2015, when the cancer relapsed, he refused to go and see doctor. And he has a word from the Lord, um, which is 2 Chronicles 2015, saying that the battle belongs to God. So, but I, I'm a very practical person. I say, yes, God also gave us good doctors, you know. So I'm trying to get him to see doctor, but he was very um, standing in faith and knowing that God wanted him to go through this and God will be the one that will fight for him. The battles belong to God. But somehow I was struggling. And during this struggling moment, 2015, I, uh, every day when he was 24 7 bleeding, every day, every time I come home from, uh, come back from work, the blood is on the floor. Every morning, the blood is on the pillow. And every day, the buckets is filled with two boxes of tissue filled with blood. So it wasn't easy for me. It was a journey of faith. Whether I walk through that journey, not knowing where we're going to end up, but I think that was a journey God spoke to me because I was crying a lot. I see my stubborn husband again. Now he didn't want to go and see doctor because I didn't want to make the same mistake when I first, when he was first diagnosed. I delay him, feeding him with talisman, scorpion wine, waiting for lightning strike. And that caused him stage four cancer spread throughout the body. So when the relapse came, obviously, as you didn't want to do, repeat the same mistake, the first thing is you want to bring him to see doctor. And that's where our Lord amazingly gave him that peace. But I didn't have peace, honestly speaking, I must confess. After witnessing how awesome this God has worked my husband up from dead to alive, and yet when he start bleeding, my faith start shaking. And got shaken and also not knowing where he's gonna end up, but he was totally having peace and I was struggling. And I was crying every day and I asked the Lord, why is that, how little faith I have? And it was, and then the Lord remind me, it was a faith that I have when he gave me John 11, 11, that we have now the miracle. If I didn't believe God then with that word, John 11, 11, that God is going to wake him up, probably we don't have the story to share with you how this amazing God. So I guess God used that as my second journey of faith. I get easily shaken by little things. I always focus on circumstantial. And I think this relapse, the fifth relapse of cancer, truly ground me in. Nothing shaked me after that, but it took a long while, eight months, nine months, struggling until God gave me this song. And God also sang this song, and this is a song I composed, even though I say composed by Ashley Lowe, but the word is given by him. The tune is given by my cancer support group, one of the late brother who passed on, and he said, this tune God asked him to send to me. And I was looking at the tune, didn't know what to do, 
And that was a time, I think, when we are in the midst of really in the pit of the pit, and that's where we hang on to God. And that song came to me, and the Lord spoke to me saying that, I know your life has been <clears throat> walking from storms to storms. And he said, <clears throat> stop fighting with the storm, dance with the storm. So this is a song Jesus has wrote and sang to me during a flight from Singapore to KL. 45 minutes, all the words came out in that 45 minutes. And <clears throat> today I'm going to bless, and I hope this song can also touch your heart. And because this is a very special song, this song has broken the chain for my sister who also in the ICU 2018. He is a staunch Taoist and she is a very um, into idolatries and seeing things. So when he was giving the last moment in the ICU and he, she asked her husband, which is my brother-in-law, to text me and say, ask Ashley to pray to Jesus and save her, even though she didn't know Jesus. So the only thing I can give her, I was in KL testifying for God in KL, sharing testimony. And I sent this song to my brother-in-law, said, please play this song for her. I'm in KL, there's nothing I can do, I can only pray and intercede. As he was playing that song, my, 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 my sister was um, kind of had this, uh, cannot breathe, because she actually saw in the hospital this dark thing that really compressing her. And she didn't know what is it, or she was screaming and shouting, but she cannot scream because she cannot breathe. But when the song played by my brother-in-law, the chain was broken. So when he wrote the, the message to me, I cried. I said, Lord, this is a song that you've given me, and it saves my sister. So today my sister's still alive, and um, of course quite a lot of medical thing, but she, every day she just sing praises to God. She loved Jesus. She, she came to know the Lord through the song. So I pray that today for those who come here not knowing Jesus, who come here seeking Jesus to encounter Jesus healing, or who comes here because um, um, certain hardship or uh, uh, sicknesses, but our Lord Jesus can do all. Only thing that our heart must be right with him. So I pr pray that this song would touch your heart, will be able to bless you with anointing, the same anointing he has blessed my sister and another friend of mine who is coma in the hospital also woke up by this song. So I just want to thank you, Jesus, giving me this song. He did tell me this is a very special song. Let's um, sing this song together. Thank you, Jesus. I pray that your anointing will fall upon the people here today as they hear your song, your beautiful song. Worship Thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray that, Lord, your anointing, your love and your mercy will be upon all of us today here. Shani, 
的心，打开我的心，去拥有我。是你的宝血换来我的永生，我要永远、永远的赞美你。你是我的力量。你是我的高台，都在你的翅膀下飞舞。你是我的救主，你是我的前排，我要永远、永远的赞美你。是你的光亮照耀我的路，是你的慈爱。拥抱我，是你的宝血洗净我的罪，是你的生命拥有我，拥有我。Give glory to our Lord Jesus. Thank you. I would like to invite Pastor Terry today to come up, and I truly wish. That、um, to be able to pray for you all, for those who doesn't know God, really this is a chance to to really accept this amazing Lord the Savior. Don't be like us, have to go through the storms of the storms and get to know this amazing, amazing God. Yeah. Man, hallelujah! Isn't it amazing? Why don't we stand and just give praise and glory to God for what you have done、uh, in both Tony and Ashley's life. And the wonderful gifts of speaking and singing、uh, that we have been so blessed with. As uh, uh, Ashley has said, you know she, she would love to pray for us. Now, if some of you have needs,、uh, maybe you don't call yourself a, a believer as yet, but you take your first step、uh, to believe.、Uh, this will be a good time here. So, I ask the the, the, the worship team to prepare a song that we can sing. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah! And we give it all, all the honor, all the glory. Just、uh, give a chance for some of you to respond. If、uh, perhaps、uh, you can close your eyes and be in prayer, right? If you do not know Christ Jesus Christ as a friend, as your God, and you are saying, Pastor, please pray for me. I want to take the first step to know who God is. You have heard how Jesus Christ has died on the cross for you to forgive your sins and give you new life, and you are saying, Pastor, please pray for me. I want to take the first step. I want to know who this Jesus is. I'll give a chance. Every eyes closed, so that the chance for individual response. This is, I think, the most important part of the service. From where you are, you are saying, Pastor, please、uh, pray for me. I'd like to take this first step. Can you just slip up your hands? Indication for me to、uh, to know that I need to pray for you. Is there somebody? Is there somebody? Right. Okay. Now what I'm going to do? We're going to sing this song and we will open this time for a time of prayer. Now、uh, you may want、uh, it's because you want to give your life to Jesus or to begin to trust in. Oh, there's a need in your life. It may be a job. It may be a need for healing. It may be something else.、Uh, uh, Tony, Ashley, some of the pastors here, we love to、uh, pray for you. So as we sing this song,、uh, please feel free to come forward, and we want to just、uh, pray that you meet God in a very special way this morning. <laughs> 